Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Turtle Wins the Race Home-Based Business Podcast. My name is Kara Bunton, and I've owned a home-based business since 1999, so let's talk about that. And today, I want to talk about going on YouTube or video in general and showing your face or just being afraid to do video in general. It's really important these days, you know, as, as people progress past just writing, and you, we, we all know that video is important. We all know that video is popular. We all know that the apps that show videos are things where people go and waste their time and you get sucked into it and YouTube is really big, but people still just resist being on video. And I, I understand, okay? It, it's, it's difficult if you're not used to being on video to start because number one, you have to listen to yourself. You have to see yourself. And some people just get to that point. They're like, no, I'm not going to do it. But it, it really will help your business if you can do some kind of a YouTube channel for your business. Um, now, I, I have a monthly membership where we talk about this kind of stuff. And YouTube is one of the ways. And this, it's a membership about driving traffic to wherever you want, whether it's Etsy or your website, or if you have a different place you want to send people, I don't know. But YouTube is a very important piece of that. And the people in my groups who have started YouTube channels for their businesses end up really kind of liking it. And some don't, you know, I mean, if it's not for you, it's not for you. That's that's perfectly fine. No one is forcing anyone to do video, but it is a good option if you want to drive traffic because people like video. That's it. And, and it cuts through the no like trust thing. And if you're not sure what no like trust is, it's just that people have to know who you are before they'll trust you. And then they'll like you. So first they get to know you, or even that you exist, not even just getting to know you, but just knowing that you exist. Once they do that, and they are used to seeing you on videos and that kind of thing, they'll start trusting you more. And then they'll like you. And then they'll buy from you. And that's the main goal with with using YouTube is that you want people to buy from you. Now, YouTube itself is a very weird algorithm. It's not, well, it's interesting. It's an interesting algorithm. And my mother used to say, if you can't say something nice, just say it's interesting. And so I, I actually do find it interesting, but it is an interesting algorithm where it's not based so much on search. It's based on interaction. So we all know that you go to YouTube and it starts showing you things based on the things that you've watched already. And if you think about it, and I just, I ran this by, we just had a live in the traffic SEO membership. Um, and I said, you guys, when you go to YouTube, do you, this is what I do. Is it the same thing? Everybody's pretty much, yeah, this is what I do. So what you do is you go to YouTube, you search for something and YouTube shows you options. So then you choose one of those and you start watching it. And then YouTube starts suggesting things for you. So you watch one of those, or you see something in the side that looks interesting. So you watch one of those and everything that you watch, YouTube is taking note of, and it's relating to something else. So it, YouTube knows who watches these videos. And so they're going to relate it to the things that you watch and the things that these other people who watch the same videos watch. And they're just going to keep suggesting things to you. And usually what happens with me is I'll search for something. I'll watch a few videos and it starts to get off course a little bit. And I go back and redo the search. And pretty much everybody in the group is like, yeah, that's that's kind of how I do it. Because you have to tune it in. Like YouTube will start suggesting things are just a little bit off. And it, it's interesting because you can discover things that way. And it's important as a creator, whether you're making things or you're doing videos, whatever the purpose of your YouTube channel is, it's important that you let YouTube show your videos to people so that they can discover you. Okay. So YouTube is a good way to get cold traffic. So people who've never heard of you before, your videos will probably get suggested to them as long as you know how to relate them to other things. And that's a whole, that's a whole thing. That's in my membership. If you're interested, links in the description, go sign up for that. Um, But most of the objections that I hear from people are about not wanting to show their face on camera. I get it. I want you to go on YouTube and just do random searches for just basic topics. It could be anything. There is so much on YouTube. There is so much on YouTube and there's a topic, there's a video for every topic. 
not everyone on YouTube is a teenager who's doing crazy stunts. There are people who are teaching psychology. There are people who are teaching math. There are people who, like, I watch a lot of animal rescue videos. We know that. There are people who are doing all kinds of things. There's his, there's historical lessons. There's things. There's all kinds of ways that you can be on YouTube and find an audience who is not offended by your face. Look, you have to go to the store. You talk to people every day, right? It's the same thing. And the first few times that you do this and you get on camera, it is going to feel awkward. It's going to feel weird. But if you're an introvert like myself, I 100% am an introvert. It's, it's actually good because you can control the interaction. You can stop. If I'd wanted to stop this video right now and just delete it, I could. Okay. You can't do that when you're talking to somebody, the conversation is out there. It's done. But if you are in the process of making a video, you control that. You, you have the control over what you edit in, what you cut out. So it's not really as scary once you get into it as you might think that it is. And people are going to see your face and not say anything. And there might be some people who do. That's I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, well, actually, let's talk about that now. The other, a, a very real thing that people say the reason that they don't want to do video or YouTube is, is that they're afraid of criticism. And that is a very real and scary possibility because people on YouTube are crazy. Like, and like I said, the way that YouTube works is it'll, it'll suggest videos to people based on things that they've watched and things that are similar to things they've watched. So you can be suggested to people who don't know who you are. They've never seen you. They've never heard of you. And those, there are kinds of people, not everyone, but there are a lot of people who just feel like they can write anything. And we all know this and we call them trolls. Okay. Now this is a book. I love these. I love these books. I have steal like an artist and show your work by Austin Cleon. The links for these are in the description of this video. Cause these are so good. They're very quick. They're short little books. They're a very quick read. But there's one line in this one, and I went and searched for this because this stuck in my mind, and it's absolutely true. Okay, so he's talking about trolls. He's talking about people who are going to criticize you because this is a book about sharing your work, right? Like show your work, sharing, sharing with people that you've never met on social media and the whole thing. Um, he's talking about trolls. Trolls are people who have nothing better to do than just to go and try to pick a fight or to say something that they think is going to provoke you. And yeah, it does provoke you because we're all human. But this, this says, do you have a troll problem? Use the block button on social media sites. Delete nasty comments. My wife is fond of saying, if someone took a dump in your living room, you wouldn't let it sit there, would you? Nasty comments are the same. They should be scooped up and thrown in the trash. I 100% agree with that. All right now, Yes, you're going to have to see the nasty comment probably, but YouTube really actually does have a really good system for filtering that kind of stuff out and for just getting rid of it and hiding it and deleting people and blocking people. And the good thing about YouTube is that you can hide, you hide people from your channel. You can delete comments or you can hide them from your channel. You can hide the person. So that person can be hidden from the channel, but they don't know it. Nobody alerts them to the fact that they've been hidden from the channel. So they can be coming in here and typing a five paragraph, you know, manifesto to tell you how horrible you are. You'll never see it if you've hidden them from your channel and neither will anyone else. They're the only ones who see it. They don't know that they've been blocked. So you're basically just wasting their time. And that's good because that means they can't do it to someone else. So don't be afraid if you're on YouTube to delete comments or just be prepared for it because I get comments. I delete a lot of comments on my channel and I have absolutely no tolerance for that. I have no tolerance for any nonsense. If you even get close to a line, you're probably going to get hidden. I don't even have time to argue with you. Um, and, you know, every now and then I'll just say something snarky back to somebody but if they come back at me, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to play your game. I just hide it from the channel. So see ya. Don't be afraid of that because you can also turn comments off. YouTube has a really good system for preventing people from even commenting on your, if you don't like it, just turn the comments off. 
If they do post it, you can hide them from the channel and just delete the video. Or you can report the comment. YouTube is pretty good about that. You can report comments that are really offensive. But if you're interested in learning about this, join my membership because I've got a whole section on YouTube. And yeah, there's there's a whole there's a whole way that you can block comments. It's it's a thing. But the YouTube system is really good for that. So if you're not doing this because you're afraid of the feedback that you're going to get, turn the comments off. You won't get any feedback. That's fine until you get used to it. And then I think it's good to have people interacting with you. It does not hurt your channel if you don't have comments turned on. They'll still show the video to people. YouTube really watches for watch time. Like how long does someone watch a video? If it's a 10 minute video, are they watching 30 seconds and then leaving? Or are they watching five or six minutes of it? That makes a big difference to YouTube. And they really don't care about comments or subscribers, honestly. They don't care how many subscribers you have. They'll still show your video to people. So don't be, yeah, we're all afraid of criticism. I was going to say, don't be afraid of criticism. We're all afraid of criticism. But YouTube has a good system for kind of, you know, shielding you from some of that. You are going to get some of it, but it's not the kind of thing that you have to take seriously because these people don't know you. You know, they, there's just, there's too many weirdos in the world. And, you know, that could be one reason why you don't want to be on YouTube. I would say that if you have ever had a problem with a stalker, you probably don't want to be on YouTube. We'll just, we'll just put it that way. Um, Cause I do know people who have had problems with people harassing them through Etsy. You might not want to be on YouTube, but if you do, you can do that and just turn the comments off and then you never have to see it. Right. The other thing that people say is a reason that they don't want to be on YouTube is if they don't have anything to talk about and no one's going to watch my videos. Well, it's true. At the beginning, no one is going to watch your videos and that's okay. You have to make a decent number of videos before you can expect anyone to be watching them. But sometimes you do have something to show your work or you can talk about the things that you're doing. You can show a project. I've done videos. I, I have, let me see, I have this YouTube channel. I have YouTube tutorials. I have Kara Bunton tutorials. I have a channel for my gingerbread house slash dollhouse blog, which I don't post on very much. I have an artisan shopping directory channel, which I don't post on very much. And I have a channel for my cake decorating business. So I have five YouTube channels. Um, the, they're all, they all serve different purposes. But the cake one, I have a lot of videos of product demos, product photos. I just have like a video. If I have a Etsy Explore video that I've taken to upload it to Etsy Explore, I put it on YouTube as a short. It works. And people actually do watch them. I think it's a little weird, but people do watch them sometimes. And the, okay, you know, um, I get consistent traffic. YouTube is one of my top two sources of traffic to my website, including it's YouTube and Google. That's and Pinterest, YouTube, Google, and Pinterest. That's where I put my time. But YouTube has always sent a lot of traffic to my website. And I get people asking me questions about how to use the products. I can send them to a YouTube video. It's very convenient. There, you have a lot to talk about and you just don't know it. So again, think it, think about it, but go go and do a search for your category on YouTube. Go and do a search for the type of products that you sell and see what people have made videos about. And people will watch them. You, they, The first few, they're not going to, like I said, because the first few videos that you do are going to be terrible. That's, that's just how it is. They're not going to be good. You're going to feel awkward. You're going to sound awkward. It, that's okay. And you'll get over it. You'll get better. The more, it's just practice. The more practice you have, the better it's going to be. Okay. The last reason that I hear people say, oops, I just whacked the microphone. The last reason that I hear people say they don't want to do YouTube or video is they just don't know where to start. And that's, there are so many videos on YouTube about how to make a YouTube channel. It, it's not even funny. That's a major industry on YouTube is how to make a YouTube channel. Now, most of those are intended for people who want to do YouTube as a job. So they take it really seriously. You don't have to take it that seriously. Okay, I've made some changes in my channel. I was taking it last year really seriously. I said, I'm going to take this seriously. I'm going to I'm going to make a lot of changes. I'm going to do editing. I'm going to do important thumbnails. I'm going to do keyword research. It didn't make a bit of difference, right? So you have to find the audience. But it once you do that, you can pretty much do what you want on YouTube and they will watch you. 
So there are things that you need to pay attention to, like the sound and oh, like, look, it's very dark right here right now, but this is a podcast. People are supposed to be listening to it. And I've, I've done enough experimentation where I've gotten the sound okay. It's not the best, but it's okay. You can hear me. And it, it will, the first few videos that you do are going to be awful. So don't worry about that. But the thing is just to start, start them. And if, like I said, if you want to join my membership, you can do that. We do talk about YouTube in there and people in that group are starting channels and they're building the channels. There's a few people who are building channels to the point where the channels are monetized and they're actually making money from their YouTube channel. And that's, that's good. That's a little extra source of income. It might not be a lot, but every, anything is better than zero, right? So don't be afraid of YouTube. It's really a very, very good way to get information across to your customers and to find people who may never have heard of you, but YouTube will suggest that. Another good thing about YouTube is that you can be found in Google through YouTube a heck of a lot easier than you can be found through Etsy on Google. So when Etsy tells you to optimize this, that, or the other, it's not going to help you be found on Google because of the way that Etsy works with Google. If you post, if you post a video on YouTube, it can be on Google in search results in 10 minutes. And that happens to me all the time. It, it, it's quite amazing. So it's a good way to get fresh eyes on your business. It's a good way to get found in Google. It's a good way to get people to know, like, and trust you. And it, it really is just practice. It's, it's hard at first, but you get over it. And like I said, you can control this. I could take this and just delete this whole thing. I'm not going to. But if I decided that I wanted to and I wanted to redo it and make it better, I could. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to post it and leave me any questions. Give this video a thumbs up. I do appreciate people watching and I hope that this was helpful. Don't be afraid of doing video for yourself because it's not as scary as you think and it really does pay off. All right. I will talk to you later.